we're here to make a new type of news. New insights, new styles and new topics every day. We are News Generation. Making news just for you. It's June 2nd here in Seoul. I'm Shin Yeun, and this is News Generation, where we make the news at Arirang's very own open studio. Every morning, we'll discuss the top issues and latest current affairs affecting people in their 20s and 30s. Joining me in the studio is Kim Xiang. Good morning, Yeun. Good morning, and Chiji. Happy Friday and 100th episode. 100th anniversary. 100th episode today. Can you guys believe it? It's I can really... believe it. You can. Right. Blood and tear. <laughs> Blood and tears. And both are here to speak on behalf of people in their 20s and 30s. As usual, we're going to start with our news feed. If you take a look at the screen, it's going to cover different hashtags and news items that have been trending on social media over the past 24 hours. First story, Russia may prohibit people from changing their gender. Task News Agency on Tuesday said authorities proposed a bill banning doctors from performing sex reassignment surgeries. It reflects the Kremlin's growing intolerance against gender issues, mainly LGBTQ rights, which Moscow says are lifestyles promoted by the West. Next, Elon Musk has regained his title as the world's richest man with a net worth of $192 billion in U.S. dollars. The Tesla CEO bumped luxury giant LVMH's CEO Bernard Arnold off the top. Bloomberg Billionaires Index said the two centi billionaires have been neck and neck for the top spot for months, but recently Arnold's wealth came down with luxury stocks experiencing a downturn. Musk's wealth, on the other hand, had a major uptick recently. His net worth increased by 40 percent, which is around 55 billion dollars this year. Moving on to the last story from Thursday, South Koreans who have COVID-19 can come to the office. This comes as the the KDCA lowered the level of national crisis for COVID-19 from serious to alert. Now, following this decision, the mandatory seven days of self-isolation once you get COVID-19 has been advised to has been changed to an advised five days at home. Now, we're going to dig a bit deeper into the third hashtag. The changes in quarantine rules have stirred some complaints among South Korean workers. Many went on social media or online communities to say that they thought it was unfair that their companies quickly adapted to the new public health rules. Apparently, Many companies are now requiring people to take their own monthly leave or work from home for three days and then come to the office. The people complaining said it would have been better for them to have caught COVID-19 earlier when a seven-day mandatory quarantine period was in place. Now, another argument was that it was unfair because though perceptions on the threat of COVID-19 have changed, the virus's symptoms and the fact that it hurts is still the same. And I think it's great that COVID-19 has transitioned from being a pandemic to an endemic. But I also can relate to many of those who find it unfair or have been too accustomed to the so-called new normal that they feel like it's taking a step backward to be forced to come back to work with COVID-19. What are your thoughts on this, Chihi? Well, like you said, I totally understand mm -hmm. those people uh, who think that it's really unfair because for those who've just gotten the virus after uh, this whole scrapping of the yeah. self-isolation measure, it will be unfair for them because they have to take their own mm. leave and they have it's to so work unfair. from home. It is unfair uh, because they don't get the benefit of staying home <laughs> the yeah, for, yeah. Yeah. Two -week <laughs> holidays. For, uh, for seven days now. Uh, but then I think this is the way we should transition into the new normal. Mm. Uh, and also I'm really happy though that it's finally an endemic. But it is of course unfair for those who still have the same symptoms and still have have that same pain after getting this exactly. virus. Exactly, the symptoms are still the same, but as mm. you said, I think we're now experiencing the new, new normal, yes, right? New, we're new now normal. seeing it as an endemic. <laughs> and another kick to COVID-19 being classed as an endemic is that more people are being required to stop working from home and physically come into the office. But as I mentioned before, COVID-19 has changed the landscape of the workplace. You know, more people have found it effective and convenient to work from home. What are your thoughts on this, Xiong? Should we try going back to the normal we knew before the pandemic, or should we try to accept and accommodate this so-called new normal we've already made for the past yeah. few years? So, I mean, according to a research by Gartner, mm -hmm. uh, there is going to be, is expected that around 39% of employees will work in hybrid format, okay. which is both an on-site format and working remotely from home or from your personal space. Mm -hmm. So that will become a trend as well, whilst around 9% will turn to fully remote working uh, in the post-pandemic world. Now, I think this really depends on what kind of profession you're in. I mean, recently we talked about Elon Musk in the newsfeed as well. But Elon Musk, when he took over Twitter, he called for uh, all of their staff members to fit in a 40 hours a week uh, on-site work hour. Basically every day. Basically every day, <laughs> change from their more loose, you know, working from right. home uh, during the pandemic. And this 
was a big change for everybody. But this really made sense because you know a lot of the IT companies also need to troubleshoot mm -hmm. uh, when some issues arise and things like that as urgently as possible. And if someone's at home, they might call them. And go, oh, sorry, you know, I was in the somewhere. You know, yeah. my internet got cut off yeah. for a few minutes. That's not good enough an excuse. And uh, I think, to be honest, so that's why I'm saying certain professions. Mm -hmm. Uh, things like you know, if you're say, if you do basic online customer service, right. if you're doing some translation work, those kind of professions you can definitely do at home yeah. remotely, and that could also cut down the carbon footprint mm. of coming to an office. Of, so you true. know, also cut down the cost of the company renting an office space mm. as well. Mm. All right, and that was our news feed for this Friday. Moving on to today's discussion topic, as we mentioned earlier, today is the 100th episode of News Woo! Generation. <laughs> Time definitely flies, and we'll be having a little get together ourselves after our show. We might have a few drinks on the side, and that's what we'll be talking about today: drinking, how our generation does it. Take a look at the screen to find out more. This green bottle has many nicknames, like a man's life friend and the commoner's drink. Soju, a Korean distilled alcohol made from a blend of rice and other grains like wheat and barley, has been a steady seller. But drinking culture is changing. And people are drinking more premium drinks like whiskey. Different types of highball drinks have gained popularity as well after people stayed home during the pandemic and made their own drinks. Today, NewsGen aims to answer three questions. One, what's the most trending drink or way the new gen drinks these days? Two, how has their perception towards traditional drinks changed? Three, how should our drinking culture evolve? Thank God it's Friday. Here in Korea, <laughs> we have another name for this weekday. It's Purgum, which literally translated means Fire Friday. Easily put, it refers to how people want to spend a lit Friday night stress-free. And usually this involves alcohol. So here in the studio, I would not we're gonna have a prugum with some drinks during our news gen. <laughs> Hopefully, no news gen get together. Now, what about you guys? Do you guys enjoy the casual drink? I do. I mean, I do casually drink and uh, quite often. I like every would say. day. Like every day. <laughs> I, I actually don't like drinking very much, oh. so I hope not every day. You know, you can really feel the damage. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You know, if you drink every day, you can really feel your guts hurting. You're, you know, you're like, oh no, again. Uh, I mean, if you do it in moderation, it could be fine. Yeah. But for my profession as well, being a journalist, yeah. you know, a lot of the times, even when you hang out with other journalists, you know, we all end up drinking. You all, all involve a drink. Yeah, we yeah. have a chat. We go to if we, especially if a specific sort of interviewee that we're trying to cook up a little bit, we're trying to get some information out. Get a story out of us. Yeah, we'll get together, go for if they're Russian, you know, if they're from you know, so Eastern Europe, we'll go for vodka. If they're from <laughs> Middle East, we'll have some tea actually. You oh. know, if they're from China, we'll have some Baijiu or so something like that. So what's your favorite drink then? So personally, I do like whiskeys. Mm. I do like sort of higher alcohol content by volume drinks rather than you know soju or beer. Mm. Soju, especially, I, I, if I drink soju, I actually like traditionally fermented soju, traditionally produced soju, I which see. there is an increase of right now, mm. traditional mm. liquor. So I like whiskeys, Korean traditional liquors, yakchu, soju, oh. uh, andong soju, and makgeolli, and things mm. like that. As well I as certain, yeah, yeah, high, high, you know, high alcohol content drinks. So you I like see. to get drunk, I guess. <laughs> but <laughs> it's more pure. It feels I you see. have less of a hangover. Okay, ah, mixing, that's true. Yeah, mixing For beers, sure. wine, mm, all that, yeah. you know, lower alcohol content. If you go whiskey all night, you wake up perfectly fine. Really? Mm. We'll take that advice from Shion. <laughs> now, what about you, Ji? Well, I do drink mm. uh, from time to time, but not as often as Shion, I don't <laughs> think. <laughs> Maybe once or twice a month. Okay. Uh, and I do like drinking if there's good food yes. and if I'm around people I like right. and I also from time to time enjoy homsur or hunsur mm -hmm. as well which is a compound word in Korean it's a mix of uh, home and alcohol or alone and alcohol so it basically means you're drinking at home alone yeah. it sounds a little <laughs> sad <laughs> it sounds you're really stressing <laughs> alone <laughs> But the number of people who drink alone uh, increased during the COVID pandemic Definitely. as well. And they had the online uh, drinking session yes. as well. Where the, oh, Zoom yeah. the Zoom meetup. Yeah. Meet yes. What people about, drink together. Yeah. What about yeah. you, Anne? Do you have a favorite drink? 
I actually love drinking wine, and as you mentioned, Chihi, I am a big fan of hunsuru as well. Mm. And during the COVID, you can't go out to the bars because of the social distancing measures, but I really had fun connecting to Having my friends. Having a bottle a night. A bottle a night, that's a lot. <laughs> a, glass of, a glass of wine with my friends internationally, mm. and I connected to Zoom. But now, I think we all have very different ways we like to drink. Actually, mm. commonalities between me and Chihi, I'd yes. say. But Xiong, I hear that drinking trends have actually changed with our generation, right? Definitely. I mean, uh, uh, before we go into the consumption patterns change, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, <laughs> my favorite drink. Okay. Uh, whiskey importation hugely increased it even has. compared to last year. Mm -hmm. So compared to the first quarter of 2022, there has been 78.2% increase uh, in uh, the first quarter of 2023, which is right now. Mm -hmm. So according to the Korea International Trade Association, this is due to whiskey growing popularity among millennials and Gen Zs. Right. So uh, yeah, we'll be. Uh, if we go have a look at the screen, we can see that uh, we have a trend of the new consumption patterns. Mm -hmm. According to a 2021 survey by Korea Agro Fisheries and Food Trade Corporation, which allowed multiple responses, the most common trend was that the younger generation now purchased their alcohol at convenience stores right. rather than liquor shops. Mm -hmm. The second most common was drinking at home, followed by drinking for pleasure and wanting to try a variety of low alcohol content drinks such as beers. Mm. Drinking alone, just like Ji said, <laughs> has been identified as a rising trend as well. For sure. And I know that beer, for beer, we've seen a yeah. lot of Japanese acai beer. Yeah, 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 that, that's become popular. Right. So, I mean, these new trends are indeed very different and new from what even what I'm used to. And mm. trends like drinking at home can be blamed uh, due to the rise of COVID-19 pandemic. We couldn't meet our friends and things like that. But South Korea is interesting because it really doesn't have many dedicated liquor shops, unlike other countries. And many have been purchasing alcohol from supermarkets <laughs> before uh, the spread of convenience stores as well. And these are very fascinating facts. But what about you, Ji? How do you think our generation drinks differently compared to older generations? Well, I think uh, the older generation like to drink like mm. Xiong, <laughs> the pure Socially, alcohol yeah. content. We got it. <laughs> Socially and yeah. uh, the alcohol itself. Yeah. But uh, many youngsters these days, they like to mix different drinks together. Right. Why can't you stop laughing? I'm sorry. I, I, I it sounded as though you um, are part of the old generation, but you're not. I wasn't older saying that. Me. I know. I I am older than older than than anyways, anyway, yeah. so the trend is mixology. Mm -hmm. So people tend to mix their alcoholic yeah. drinks with sweet soda drinks. Mm -hmm. Or for yeah, me, yeah. one of my favorite would be natural wine, um, mm. citron wine or yujaju mm. mixed with sparkling water is really good. It is. <laughs> and, yeah, and there's a lot of different uh, mixed drinks that are available in the convenience stores as well. Well, including makgeolli, which we'll talk about later yeah. on as well. So that's a new trend. People like to drink a mix of different beverages together. For sure. And Chihi, mm. as you mentioned, there seems to be this new alcoholic beverage that's caught the attention mm. of younger consumers, as you mentioned, makgeolli, mm. which is traditional rice wine in Korea. And makgeolli is now considered trendy and hip. Mm. But it wasn't always like that, was it, Chihi? It wasn't. Makgeolli mm. would be more sort of rural drink. Yeah. We'll have it during, uh, farmers would have during their lunchtime breaks, because it's a very traditionally brewed fermented yeah. liquor. So it's basically it's rice wine, it's based from rice. Mm. You have rice, you also get nuruk, mm. which is basically kind of yeast kind of format where you gotta put in the nuruk, fermented, and that becomes after you've uh, purified it a few times, that becomes makoli. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I mean online sales for traditional liquors have been allowed by the Korean government in t since 2017. I think mm -hmm. that really changed uh, the whole game of mm. traditional liquors. For sure. So currently in Korea, it is illegal to sell any other sort of uh, liquor, other even beers or soju mm. or even whiskeys or even vodkas. Mm. It's illegal to sell them on the online platform, but only traditional liquors are allowed since I said uh, 2017. Maybe that's why we're seeing such a boom in popularity. I think so as well. And even yesterday, uh, the, you know, I went to an event hosted by Ministry of Food, Agriculture, Forest and Fisheries mm -hmm. uh, for foreign okay. correspondents in South Korea. And we had an event 
of testing different, tasting different makgeollis. They'll introduce you the history of these makgeollis, mm. how the fermentation process goes on and everything. Mm. I think that really, really promotes the, the new trend of traditional No liquors. wonder you knew so much about how to make <laughs> makgeolli. Yeah. All right, and Chi, what about you? Why, why do you think makgeolli is becoming so popular amongst our generation? I think it's because it's become trendy. There are different products being introduced, and there are even makgeolli bars. They're just like whiskey bars. Mm. So if you take a look at the video that we can see uh, on the screen, we can see different makgeollis being enjoyed yeah. by the youngsters. Oh. And there are like fruit makgeollis, yeah. slushy makgeollis, and they have all these different bottled makgeollis. One of my favorite would be chestnut makgeolli. Oh, so nice. It's chestnut very easily uh, seen in yeah. different convenience stores and marts nearby. So it's really become easy for youngsters to enjoy these different types of makgeolli. So it's not a traditional uh, old kind of drink anymore because it's light in content, alcoholic content as well, and it has different flavors added to them. Mm -hmm. So they're enjoyed by uh, many millennials these days in the country. And not to mention, they have such a pretty design of the bottle. Oh, yes. Which is why it captivates nice Yes. And stuff these it's days. a very the important part. The colors are pretty, and some right. people might do it for the gram, take pictures. Mm -hmm. yeah. But to find out more about what the hottest drinking trends or beverages are among millennials and Gen Z, we're now going to include a manager of a bar here in Seoul. What we drink and how we drink it seems to differ from our parents and their parents' generation. And to find out how exactly, we'll include Geraldo Macoso, a manager of a cigar and whiskey bar here in Seoul. Welcome, Geraldo. Hello. How are you guys doing? Hello, Fine. Thank Geraldo. you. Now, Geraldo, I would like to ask you the first question. Based on our discussion so far, would you agree that younger people prefer drinking premium alcoholic beverages compared to what used to be the commoner's drink, a.k.a. soju? And by premium drinks, I'm talking about whiskey, highballs, or top-notch makgeolli. Yeah, yeah. I, I do believe that uh, younger generation, they are tending to go more towards premium drinks. Mm -hmm. I did I did study in Korea and I do remember that me and my Korean friends we used to drink a lot of soju back in the days outside of convenience yeah. stores. You don't see that happening yeah. very often. You don't see Koreans drinking uh you know soju outside of CU25, you know. Um so you would see foreigners exchange students doing that but you don't see Koreans. You see them they're actually going more towards you know the premium drinks, you know, mm -hmm. like you say like champagne and you know uh, premium Macaulay, uh, whiskeys, and so on. And Chiang, would you yeah, like to I ask mean, the so, question? Well, I think that's a trend as well. Uh, I mean, I personally also like whiskeys uh, over soju and things like that. But why do you think this is the case? Do you think it's because of the market structure, or do you think something changed in the younger generation? I do believe it has a lot of. It has to do a lot with Hollywood influence. Mm -hmm. You know, for example. We would have customers at Iden House. They would come like, "Hey, I would like to try a martini, right?" And then once I'll make a martini, I'll give them a martini. They'll try and they're like, "Oh my goodness, it's horrible!" Just vodka. <laughs> yeah, and, I, <laughs> and I'm like, "Why did you want to try a martini?" They're like, "Oh, because I saw James Bond drinking a martini." Oh, I see. I was like, "Ah, so like movies and, and whatnot." Same thing with whiskey. They'll they'll ask for whiskey. They've never tried whiskey, and whiskey doesn't really taste good. Mm. To be honest, it doesn't taste good. You know what I mean? <laughs> so they'll try whiskey and they're like, no, it's horrible. Like, yeah, it is horrible, you know? Geraldo, so, I can hear. <laughs> Xiong does not agree so with you good. right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I do enjoy a glass You're of wine. You're missing out, Geraldo. I'm, my apologies, man. My apologies. <laughs> no, no worries. No. Uh, so, Geraldo, uh, I, I understand that content can really affect how people consume alcohol because they want to uh, try out the things that actors try in the movies and uh, dramas, whatnot. My third question would be, before you became a manager of Iden House, you used to live in Canada, I hear. So what is it like? What's the difference between how uh, the alcohol culture in Canada and here and the millennials and the Gen Z drinkers there and in Korea? So in Canada, there's a lot of pre-drinking at home. Mm. Uh, you can really buy alcohol at 7-Eleven 
I actually was reminded by that. I went to Canada last November and I tried to purchase alcohol at 7-Eleven and there was no alcohol. I was shocked. I was like, wait, there's alcohol at 7-Eleven? In Korea, if you go to GS25, CEO, you'll find alcohol. But in Canada, they don't sell alcohol at 7-Eleven. They have specific liquor store that you go and you buy alcohol. Oh. And so what would happen, a lot of the, you know, millennials, Gen Z, they'll, they'll purchase like a whiskey bottle, of vodka, they'll take it home, they'll pre-drink it at home, and then they'll head to the club because it's, mm. you know, it's cost efficient that way. Mm. You know what I mean? So in Korea, I don't see a lot of free drinking at home. Mm. Really? Yeah. Maybe if they go to like, like, if they go and eat, they drink before going out. But specifically, strictly inviting your friends over at your place to drink before going out. I don't think that happens very common here mm. in Korea. Yeah, that's a good point. I remember like pregame is such a culture, you know, outside of Korea. But here in Korea, I think there's ita ita samta. You start at one bar and you bar hop, one right? Bar. I think there's a difference People there. People live for in sure. so small apartments. Exactly, for sure. All right, thank you so yeah. much, Geraldo. Oh. Oh, thank you. Yeah, All yeah. right. <laughs> and before we continue our talks, we're also going to hear what our global viewers had to say on today's topic. So take a look at the screen to find out what three of them said. Michael Mayo said casual drinker, coffee and Bailey's cream if I can get it, or a frozen margarita are his go-to drinks. Kevin Michael Kapler said his go-to drink is strawberry daiquiri. I'm a slow social drinker. Tara Spell says my family has a history of alcoholism, so I'm usually not a heavy drinker. I usually slow drink or drink until I'm tipsy. However, on special occasions I go all out and I think Tiras Bell gave me a really good segue to mention this here on news gen today's episode is not to encourage binge drinking we do know that there are a lot of dangers from drinking excessively we're just talking about one of the cultures the news generation the new generation is going through which is drinking <laughs> the differently news <laughs> the news generation <laughs> is that we drink differently not really in regards to quantity mm. but I do feel about quality right so what do you guys think and how would you guys like to see this this evolving drinking culture go, starting with you. Well, first of all, I'm really glad that here in Korea, we no longer pressure people to mm. drink. We're not drinking to get drunk. Yeah. But like the millennials and the Gen Zs, uh, we're enjoying our drinking a lot more, like enjoying our food, because we're looking for the delicious kind of drinks that we like. Uh, so I would want to see this trend continuing uh, in a healthy way and make sure that alcohol doesn't become an essential part of gatherings, yeah. but just an option yeah. on top of the gathering. Just on the side, yes. for sure. Xiang? Yeah, I mean, I agree with that 100%. And I think because South Korea has such a long history of drinking mm -hmm. culture as well, now we're seeing evolving into something more casual yeah. with something where we have lots of options, mm -hmm. where we even import a lot of different drinks and try different, you know, range of global liquors. So I think that's really positive. And I think we should be able to control how much we drink in those social occasions as well. For sure. But you know, alcohol being sort of Korea's only vice, mm -hmm. I think it's more trendy and more consu over consumed compared to even other countries. Mm -hmm. And I think that really should, everybody should be aware. Yeah. And uh, even for a hundredth <laughs> for episode, our hundredth episode get together. Mm -hmm. we should hope that, you know, none of us. We will be setting a good trouble. example. We will be setting a good Are example. We going to set you a good will. Example? Yes, of course. I'm going to set a good example. <laughs> I will too. We'll control I'm ourselves. I'm not a big, big fan of drinking. So. Are you sure? <laughs> all right. And that's all we have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be here every day from 9 30 to 10 a.m. Korea time, bringing you more topics young people are talking about. Special thanks to Kim Siyang. My pleasure. And Chiji Hee. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone, for watching. We'll see you next week. We are New, New Generation. Generation.